Ghana, formerly known as the Gold Coast, is located along the west coast of Africa. The country is 238,537 square kilometers in size, with a population of about 25 million. History has it that cocoa was first introduced in Ghana by the Dutch missionaries in the early 19th century, but it wasn't until Teta Kwashi, a native of Osu in Accra, traveled to Fernando Po, now Equatorial Guinea, and returned with a Melonado cocoa pot in 1879 that it began to spread. He established a farm in Aquia Pimampong in the eastern region from where enthusiastic farmers brought cocoa pots to plant, which resulted in the spread of cocoa to other parts of the region. Currently there are six cocoa growing areas, namely Ashanti, Brong Ahafo, Eastern, Volta, Central and Western regions. The commercialization of cocoa has seen the industry go through an interesting production trend of 36.3 tons in 1891 to a peak of 580,000 tons in 1964 to 1965. The two decades spanning from the mid-60s to the mid-80s saw output dropping to an all-time low figure of 158,886 tons in 1983 to 1984, which was just 9% of world production. Then the decade following the mid-80s saw a sturdy rise in production to 309,455 tons in 1994 to 1995, by 2004 to 2005, production had attained 599,318 tons, with Ghana hitting an all-time highest in its cocoa production history of 1,024,553 tons in 2010 to 2011. It is important to understand that the period of decline of the industry was caused mainly by factors such as low yielding cocoa varieties planted at the time, aged farms, many of the cocoa trees were coming to the end of their economic productive life, diseases mainly the black pod and the swollen shoot virus disease, CSSVD, an infestation of pests, particularly capsids, and the decline in soil fertility. To address these threats, Ghana Cocoa Board, popularly known as Cocoa Board, the official agency responsible for the cocoa industry in Ghana, charged its research arm, the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana, CRIG, which was established in June 1938 to undertake scientific research to come up with solutions. The institute, a center of excellence, pioneered works in areas such as disease and the pest control, and also play a critical role in assisting cocoa bod in raising cocoa production using specially developed nutrients and the fertilizers. They also continually carry out research trials on shade tree selection and into various diseases affecting cocoa production. Craig's bid for solution to the declining cocoa industry in Ghana caused them to research and develop high-yielding low gestation cocoa varieties in 1972. These varieties developed are also tolerant to the black pod and CSSV diseases, capsid pests and drought. Craig also works on specially developed nutrients, insecticides and fertilizers for cocoa. Each insecticide or fertilizer used on cocoa to date goes through rigorous testing for at least three years to confirm the efficacy and ensure the maximum residue levels, MRLs, are within internationally acceptable levels before they are approved for use on cocoa. The hybrid planting material developed by Craig is handed over to the seed production unit, SPU of Cocoa Bod, that is responsible for hybrid seed multiplication. The planting materials are multiplied in the 26 seed gardens spread across the cocoa belt. The processes of multiplication of hybrid planting material are as follows. Establishment of special wood gardens and clonal budding materials. 
hand pollination of flowers in the seed gardens for production of the hybrid cocoa seed pods for farmers, raising of hybrid seedlings at stations and at designated nursery sites for distribution to farmers for the rehabilitation of aged and denuded farms and the establishment of new ones. The hybrid seedlings are also distributed to farmers by Cocoa Health and Extension Division, SHED, of Cocoa Board for replanting of swollen shoot virus disease treated farms. Another area that Cocoa Board is focusing is good agronomic practices, GAP. SHED is the division responsible for the dissemination of the GAP to farmers. The farmers are being encouraged to plant only approved planting materials and indigenous trees for shading. They are also advised to prune, remove mistletoes, maintain clean farms, apply the recommended fertilizers and control pests and diseases. SHED is also responsible for the fertilizer distribution and the pest control program, otherwise called HITECH and CODAPEC, respectively. Other government interventions in the cocoa sector aimed at encouraging sustainability include the encouragement of the youth in cocoa production. To achieve this objective, incentives including the provision of technical backstopping, training and enhanced access to inputs, including free seedlings, are being provided to young farmer groups across the cocoa belt. Cocoa Board is instituting a program that targets young farmers. And so for young people who want to go into agriculture, if they contact you know, the Cocoa Board, especially the chief executive, it's a program that he's rolling out to bring young people into uh, cocoa farming. And uh, they will help them with the seedlings. The seedlings are free of charge. They will help them with the spraying, tending to the uh, cocoa crops. They will help them with the fertilizers and the inputs and all that. And so I think that is something uh, our young people should consider. Cocoa is a perennial tree crop of the humid tropics grown frequently under forest shade. A cocoa field has an economic life of some 25 to 30 years. In Ghana, cocoa is mostly grown on the extensive management systems by smallholders, doing an average of two hectares of the crop. It is estimated that there are 800,000 cocoa farmers in Ghana, with the majority being smallholders. When the fruit is matured and ripened, they are harvested with long-handed knives or machetes. The harvested pods are heaped and broken open usually with a wooden stick and the beans scooped out by hand. The wet cocoa beans with their sweet mucilage are then fermented for five to seven days. Fermentation is essential to develop the desirable traditional chocolate flavor. The fermentation is done in a heap using banana leaves or fermentation trays or boxes. The beans are turned over at least three times to ensure the cocoa is thoroughly fermented. Post-harvest practices influence cocoa bean quality significantly. Once fermentation process is complete, the beans are dried for at least 10 to 14 days in the sun on a raised platform. Post-harvest practices such as removing debris, black beans and broken beans and careful storage will contribute to good quality cocoa beans leaving the farms. These processes add to the premium quality of the Ghanaian cocoa beans. The thoroughly dry beans are stored in jute bags and sold.
Farmers deliver the dry cocoa beans for sale to agents of licensed buying companies, LBCs. The LBCs prepare the beans for grading and sealing by the Quality Control Company Limited, QCC, of Cocoa Bod. The quality control officers sample the beans to ensure they are thoroughly dry, perform cut tests to check the beans meet the quality criteria, and tag the sacks with seals to allow traceability to the source. Cocoa beans certified by QCC are then transported and delivered to Cocoa Marketing Company, CMC, Ghana Limited, a subsidiary of Cocoa Bod, at designated takeover centers for shipment to local and overseas buyers. At the takeover point, QCC recertifies the quality of the beans and conducts the final quality checks prior to shipment. The CMC is responsible for the external marketing of cocoa beans and conducts forward sales of Ghana's cocoa beans prior to harvesting and delivers on contract to buyers. Ghana exports to the UK, Europe, America, Asia and Australia. Cocoa beans from Ghana are shipped from the ports of Tema and Takaradi using Europe-West Africa Trade Agreements conference shipping lines registered with Cocoa Board. Other independent shipping lines also register with Cocoa Board to carry cocoa from Ghana. Cocoa beans shipments take the form of bulk in containers, break bulk and mega bulk shipment. All cocoa sales contracts are regulated by the rules of Federation of Cocoa Commerce, FCC. Buyers of Ghana cocoa beans must be registered members of either FCC or Cocoa Merchants Association of America, CMAA. With change in consumer taste and requirements, the global cocoa market today has witnessed a new trend in specialized cocoa beans, leading to the emergence of traceability and certification systems. Ghana is playing a leading role in the production of certified cocoa, such as Organic, Fair Trade, Rainforest Alliance and UTZ Certified. To maximize cocoa revenue and meet changing industry trends, Ghana processes about 20% to 25% of annual output, with a long-term target of 40 to 60%. Presently, there are a number of Ghana-based international and local cocoa processing companies, such as Archer Daniels Midland Company, ADM, Barry Calibord, Cargill, Cocoa Processing Company Limited, CPC, of which Cocoa Bod has a significant stake in, Niche Cocoa Industry Limited, and Teuton Cocoa Processing Company, T. Prominent buyers, including the global leading cocoa processing and chocolate manufacturing companies such as Cargill, ADM, Mars UK, Capri, Nestle, Ferrero, and Hershey, rely heavily on Ghana cocoa as an important ingredient. Cocoa plays an important role in Ghana's economic development process. It is the third highest foreign exchange earner to crude oil and gold. Aside cocoa providing livelihood and income for a large proportion of the workforce, revenue from cocoa has over the years been used to finance infrastructure in education, health and roads. Research by Craig has yielded positive outcomes. The pod husk and cocoa sweating now have useful economic value. They are raw materials for the production of byproducts, including fertilizer, animal feed, soap, wine and jam. The aim is to encourage cottage industries where the local farmer can generate additional income. Ghana Cocoa Board finances the annual purchase of Ghana cocoa beans and undertakes subsidiary businesses by borrowing from a syndicate of leading local and international financial institutions. The key consideration by lenders are 
Ghana sells its cocoa to reputable buyers at 110% coverage ratio against fixed price contracts. Ghana Cocoa Board has never defaulted on its debt obligation and achieves a 100% payment record due to its robust operating and financial performance and a strong outlook for the cocoa industry in Ghana. The facility has enjoyed an average 35% oversubscription consistently in the past five years. Presently, Cocoa Board's annual trade finance facility benefit from the financial capital markets. Averages are nearly $1 billion a year, making it one of the largest single syndicated financial facilities in Sub-Sahara Africa. The future of the cocoa industry is bright and it will continue to support the sustainable livelihoods of millions of its people. The saying that cocoa is Ghana and Ghana is cocoa will remain a truism for decades to come.